Okay, hi everyone. We're going to uh, get moving here. Good to see you all. Hope you all had a good week or a good couple days since the Monday night class. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're coming to the end of this chapter. We probably have still another class after this one. There's a lot of extra stuff at the end, but it's going to be pretty awesome. So we'll get right into it. Hope everyone's doing well. Here we go. We're starting now. We are... Yeah, so in this book, we're on page 292, and we're, we're a little base through point number Yud Aleph that started Nachamu Nachamu Ami. So basically, this is where we're holding. We had in this Torah these two concepts of the way that divine wisdom is drawn into, into us. One way was through, was through the purification and sanctification of our seven holy candles, of our personal menorah, which is our eyes, nose, ears, and mouth, those seven openings. And that those, when we sanctify those, those aspects of us, it allows divine wisdom to come in. And the second way was through a birth process. That in the same way that, that, that a birth takes place, and that which is hidden is now now comes out and into the world, so too this level of deep spiritual wisdom is is in a state of pregnancy and is hidden away, is not born yet. And through a certain process, we're able to draw, to allow that knowledge to be born into us. And one of the main things that was that was within that pathway was the fact that just like when a woman is experiencing childbirth and, and allowing this baby to come into the world, she, she screams, she cries out. So, so too, when we're trying to break through and draw this wisdom into the world that needs to be born, it follows the same birthing path and it has to be accompanied by crying out. And so it's those screams that, 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 we, that we make through our, through our tefillah, through our through our talking to Hashem, through our, our Torah, with our with our powerful voices that allow that knowledge to be born into us. And then we said just yesterday with the, from Nachamu Nachamu, which is Nachamu Nachamu Ami is the Haftarah of consolation that is said after the three weeks, after Tishabov. And the reason why we say it is and, and the reason why it makes sense over here is because we have a concept, a principle in the deeper Torah, and that is, and that is, that gala ami mibli das. What what does exile mean and suffering mean? There's only suffering and exile when we don't have das, when we don't have this divine wisdom of clarity. When we have it. We're not in Gullus anymore. So in the future, when after Mashiach comes, and Male Kol Haaretz Dea Hashem, and the whole world will be filled with Das, with this divine wisdom, this new new paradigm shift of 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 experiential knowledge that we can't even imagine right now, right? That is going to be our comforting. That is going to be taking us out of Gullus. Because once we have Das, we're no longer in Gullus. We explained also that once we have Das, that level of Das, we'll have eternal life, Chaim Nitzchim. Because having that level of Das means that we are, we are becoming one with the Das of Hashem. Knowing, knowing Hashem so clearly, so, so, so with such clarity. When we have the same Das as Hashem, we become like Hashem. And when we become like Hashem, we... We become eternal like Hashem. So like we said last week, it's not that we're going to be able to drink an elixir of eternal life in Gan Eden. It's just that because our new, our new level of existence will be so in touch with the Das of Hashem, it's like we'll be one with the Das of Hashem. And if we're one with Hashem, we're eternal. Right? That's how it's going to be. Um, but until then, we've got to keep trying. <laughs> so, uh, so this is where we're at. So we said like this. Now, after that time, um, bottom of 292, Afilu ha'akum yedu b'yisra nadas. 
of Alekamunu. But in, in that time, even the non Jews are going to have a, a tremendously elevated das. But not like us. Not, not to the same level as us. And they're going to realize at that point this, this amazing understanding, paradigm shift of understanding. They're going to realize that the fact that when we were in Gullus and they had all the greatness, they had the power, they had the money, they had you know all the control, and we were lowly, the Jews were lowly, they're going to realize that really all that was only for our eventual greatness. Really, that was all about the greatness of, of Klal Yisrael. They're going to figure it out. They're going to understand it, even though we can't understand it now. Even though right now, we can't understand it. Because, basically, you can't deny reality. <laughs> you can't deny what you see and what you feel, right, with, with, with a theory. Um, so, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, you, you, you hear about the fact that um, Iran is developing nuclear weapons right now. And, you know, all, you, you see all the anti-Semitism in the world. You see how in the past great powers have held dominion over us, right? All the empires, as, as recent, I mean, even now. Israel can't do anything without the blessing of America, you know? Um, we can't do anything without money from America and from everybody. And, and you know, we, uh, there was Germany, there was, there was the pogroms of Poland and Ukraine, and, the, and the, the, even when, when the Sephardi Jews lived in the Arab countries, even though they were okay for quite, quite a long time, they were still ruled over and second-class citizens, right? We were never, throughout the long, the long history, if we haven't been directly persecuted and 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 fought and destroyed and beaten down, even when we're just within another nation, we're always under that nation in second class, right? So, and and you know we we can't see right now why that's good. You could never you could never go and tell someone who who's in the middle of a pogrom who just lost a loved one to to some type of terrible situation of anti-Semitism. We can't go to them and say, because like Rabbi Nachman says over here, you can't, you, can't, you can't with a theory counteract that which we experience directly. Right? So, think things are difficult. And we don't get it. We don't understand it right now. We don't understand it, and the non-Jews don't understand it. Afa pichain. Yirbe hadas. Even so, the the das is going to be is going to be tremendously increased. We're going to see. We're all going to understand. Both us and and the non Jews are going to understand that this that they were ruling over us and that they had the power and the money and 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 everything is really for our greatness. We're going to see how it, it represents our greatness. And their lowliness, but we don't get it now, but we will. Melachira, he dia gadayla, and really, it's a tremendous, uh, great level of knowledge here, right? Afal pikein he dia hazois yelanu lalag ulishchayk lefi erech yedaseinu. So, like like this, there's going to be a difference between our levels of knowledge after Mashiach comes. Rabbi Nachman is saying. That, that, that when this happens, the whole world is going to see some, a new level of clarity and a new level of dot. To the extent that the whole world is going to be able to understand how the, the way that the Jewish nation was treated was really showing the greatness of the Jews and the lowliness of the, those who persecuted them. The whole world is going to see this clearly. They're going to understand it. right? And that's a big jump. Right? Because right now, right, we know that we can't, we, we don't get that. We can't see that. No one can see that. So they're going to have this tremendous level of das. But our level of das is going to be so great compared to that, that that new level of das that the whole world has developed is going to be like a joke to us. So what he says. It's going to be like, we're going to like mock it. Like, like, like it's like a, like a, like a, wow, wow. 
that they think is a big level of understand of das, of of spiritual divine knowledge clarity. That's nothing, right? So let's see. Let's see what he says over here. Vaze az yamale ischayik pinu az yom ragoyim higdil Hashem lasu esimayle higdil Hashem lasu esimano. This is what we say in benching, right? In sorry, in shir al before benching. Az yamale ischayik pinu. Then our mouths are going to be filled with laughter, right? We're going to be looking at 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 this new level of knowledge that the rest of the world has. We're going to be laughing at how low that knowledge is compared to where we've, where we've reached. And, and we're going to say, we're going to understand. So this that we say in benching, whenever we bench on, on Shabbos or Yontif, by the way, Shiram Alas, right? Then it will be said amongst the Goyim, amongst the nations, Hashem uh, has done greatly with these people. Hashem has done greatly with us. Higdil Hashem Lasisimano. So, if we learn, read that a little bit differently, they're going to know and they're going to say, this greatness that they did with us, meaning in the past, that they did such such, such great, that the, that the non-Jewish nations had tremendous good done to them, they had power, they had money, they had strength, everything. Really, that was Hashem doing greatly for the Jews. That greatness was really for Yisrael. Was really the greatness of Klai Yisrael. And even so, our mouths are going to be filled with laughter. We're going to, he says, we're going to laugh and deride at their knowledge. Because our level of knowledge and understanding will be Ein Soif Vakates. Absolutely infinite, infinite, unending. A whole different level of knowledge. Right? So yeah, there's going to be a whole knowledge shift in the world. And the entire world is going to be filled with a new level of knowledge. But our level of knowledge, if we, if we hang on, and if we, if we become the people we're supposed to be, our level of knowledge will be insight, will be infinite. Just like we said last week, and just like we said at the beginning of this, of this year today, that our Chaim Nitzchim, our eternal life, is not going to be from chemicals or some magic powder, magic drink that we drink, right? It's going to be because our Das becomes absolutely one and enveloped together with the Das of Hashem. And when our Das is one with Hashem, we become like Hashem. And now that we, our Das and Hashem's Das are one, and Hashem is infinite, we become, in a certain sense, infinite. We reveal that infinite aspect of ourselves. So our so, so and because of that, we're going to have this eternal existence. And also, our das, our our intellect, is going to be einsoif, unending. So this 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 little new idea that that the whole world's going to have, they're going to see what what history, how history really was unfolding the whole time, and how really. What they did with the Jews only shows the greatness of the Jews and the lowliness of those who, who chose to do, to do bad things to the Jews. It's going to be a tremendous revelation for them. For us who are connecting to the Das of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in an infinite level, it's going to be like, like, like a drop in the bucket, this new level of knowledge that the rest of the world has. This is what he's saying over here. Woo! Amazing. So it's like this, listen to this. Reb Chaim brings down over here a Gemara from, in the Gemara in the Zara, it says like this. So in the future, the, 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 the rest of the nations of the world are going are gonna to look back and are going to try to get out of their uh, predicament. Right? They're going to be standing when everything is revealed. And they're going to realize that they did terrible things to the Jewish people. And, and so they're going to try to get out of it. So what are they going to say? They're going to say, like, um, oh, oh, no, no, everything we did, we really did for them. So uh, the Romans are going to say, all those uh, bridges that we built and everything, and the aqueducts that we built, really, we built them for them. Right? They're going to say, like, uh, you know, all of the, the, uh, all of the markets and bathhouses that we built, it was all for the Jews. And all the nations are going to say this. Right? America is going to say the big armies that we made and everything that we did and Statue of Liberty and the whatever, you know. 
Liberty Bell, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> are important to Americans, they're going to say everything we did, we did for the Jews, right? And in, in, uh, in Dubai, they're going to say all this craziness that we built over here and wealth and police cars made out of Lamborghinis and everything <laughs> and uh, the Palm Beach Island things, right? Everything we did, we did for the Jews. So um, uh, the Chirin Arav said like this, this is so awesome. This is the Chinna Rav is one of the main uh, Breslover commentaries. He says, where do they get off saying such a thing? In other words, it's going to be all Das is revealed. Everyone's going to be plugged into truth on a whole different level. So who, who do they think they're fooling? How could they make such a claim? Everything we did, we did for them. So he said, really, you can see Rabbi Nachman is tapping into something very deep here. And it's only from the Torah of Rabbi Nachman that we're really able to understand what that Gemara is saying. The only way they can make such a claim is because they're really going to have this understanding. They're really going to look back and say, everything that we did, all it does is show the godless of Yisrael, the greatness of, of, of Klal Yisrael, and the shiftless of them. And only with that knowledge are they going to be able to actually make that claim. That's how they're going to be able to, in the, when, when, when Das is revealed and truth is, is apparent, are they going to be able to make such a claim? Totally amazing chap from the Chinar Rav. He was a genius. So a beautiful idea. So this is what's going to be. Okay, let's go right to here. Vehayadiya yeshba makif u makif makif. Now, Knowledge, this level of spiritual knowledge that we're going to all try to tap into has a makif and a makif la makif. Now, if you remember, makif means the level of knowledge that's above me, that is hovering over me. I can't internalize it yet. I can't get it. That's makif. So this idea has a makif, but now another, and a makif la makif, right? Like a level even above that, above the level that we can't internalize, there's, gonna be, there's another level of makif, another level of knowledge. So what does that mean? Like we said before. Vezehu, and this is what we can see from this Pasik that we're going to be singing in the Haftarah next Shabbos. Next Shabbos? Two Shabbos is from now. Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, Ami. Be consoled, be consoled, my nation. Um, so it goes, Yoimar Lekechem, says your God. Nachamu, Nachamu. Be comforted, be comforted. Hainu, makif, u makif la makif. Why does it say nachamu twice? Why is it not just nachamu ami? It's nachamu, nachamu ami. Because there's two levels of makif. Shehadiya, he ikar hanechama shall kol hatzaris. Because as we said, what is it that enables us to feel tsar, to feel pain and to feel suffering, and to feel like nothing makes sense, like the whole world is against us? What is it? It's all only because a lack of das. It's only when we don't understand and we don't see what the bigger purpose is that we, that we face Yisurin and suffering and challenges and difficulty. So the ultimate comfort is, 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 is knowledge, is das, is being shown clarity about what everything means and why everything had to happen and why everything I went through everything in my life. How every moment was really a golden mountain and every moment was, was part of building me, right? And into who I need to be and connecting me to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Right? It's only that knowledge that, that is comfort after all the tsar that we face through our whole lives and through all of history. Right? So and why is there two nachamus, two comforts? Because there's two levels of knowledge that we're talking about over here. The Eich Eshar Lavar Le'adiyah, how do we get to this Yediyah? Yoimar Elokeichem says your God. So Yoimar means, means speech. Um, there's two words for speech in Hebrew. One is Dibur and one is Amira. Dibur means like a louder, sharp speech, and Amira means a softer type of speech. So here, it's the softer type. Amira bechashai, a quiet type of speech. Bechinas shemen, which is an aspect of shemen, oil, right? When oil flows, the Gemara says, when, when oil is poured, it's quiet. But when wine is poured, it's loud. So oil has a connotation of quietness. Bechinas shivasanerois. And what are the seven candles of the menorah lit with? Oil. Just like those seven illuminations that we experience are, are from our own personal menorah. It's connected to this. Elokeichem, 
La arma kala. Elokechem, however, means to, to raise up a loud voice. Bechinas elokim al damilach. Elokim, God, do not be silent. Elokim means to be loud, not silent. So first we have si- we have the silentness and, and oil of the neiros, of the candles. And then we have the elokim, which means to be loud. Bechinas tsa'akas hayoledes, which is that aspect of the screaming of the woman giving birth. Misimin chaf adkan loshen rabbeinu zichron levracha. From Torah number 20 until this point now, at the end of Torah 21, it's all been from the manuscript of Rabbi Nachman. The last paragraph that I just read is very short and terse, and we don't understand it yet. Right? I said it very, very, very briefly, what those things kind of related to. But up to this point has been all Rabbi Nachman's writings. Now, Reb Nossin is going to go and spend the next many, many, many pages explaining very cl- with much more clarity and much more verbosity these, these concepts, okay? So we're going to start now going through the words of Reb Nossin, and hopefully it's going to open things up for us to understand a little bit better. Perish. The explanation of this. We said earlier, just remember we said this concept that, that drawing down knowledge into us is the same process as the birth process. And the knowledge that we're, that we, the divine knowledge that we want to bring down is, is, is impregnated, is, is hidden in, 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 in an upper world of like a pregnancy. And it needs to be born. And just as when a woman is giving birth and she screams those 70, 70 cries, so too, we need, to, we need to do these 70 cries in order for the knowledge to be born into us. Okay, we said before. So that's, that, that, that's one aspect. And then, through sanctifying our seven candles, two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and the mouth, that we're able to draw down the makif inside of us. We need these two things in order to attain, to grasp, to internalize this holy, holy wisdom. But in the beginning, we first have to allow this wisdom to be born into existence. Because sometimes the Shefa Eloki, the godly divine wisdom, is hidden. And for this we have to scream. We have to cry out in order for this wisdom to be born, to be revealed in existence. And then once it's, it's brought down into a certain level, there's still now an, an internalized and a makif. Right? So how do we get that makif now? To that, we have to sanctify and purify our seven openings, our seven candles, our two eyes, our two, no- our two ears, our two nostrils, and our mouth. In order to draw down the makif, the surrounding, hovering, transcendent, whatever it's called, and the shefa eloki, the divine wisdom, inside. Velaso es me'amakif panimi, and to make the transcendent into the inside. Ayin sham heite v'tave. Now we can see what Rabbi Nachman's words meant and understand it. V'ze perush, v'ze shaperish, ha'pasuk nachamu nachamu. This is what Rabbi Nachman is explaining in the pasuk. Nachamu nachamu, two times comforting. Hainu, lizkois lahasagas ha'makifin, to merit, to draw in, to attain, to grasp the makif, that which is above us. Attaining das, bringing in understanding. That's the main form of consolation, is to understand what happened. Why did I have to go through that? Why was it so painful? What was really happening in, in behind the scenes that I didn't get? We get this through these two aspects. Shehem tsa'aka, which is screaming, crying out to Hashem. And that's how the, the makif becomes born. And then the, the, holy, the holiness of our seven candles. That's how we bring these makifin in, inside. And this is what it means. So you hear, guys, through the whole Torah, we were wondering how these two things work together, right? Why do we have to have these two levels? What, what's the difference between these two things? Why do we have to have the crying out to Hashem? And why do we have to have the sanctification of the seven neiros? 
So we're seeing over here that in throughout all these connections, there's always there's two makifin, there's two levels that we need to internalize, and and in order to first draw down, draw it down into into a graspable state, into a place where it's where it's shayach, where it's born into our existence, right? For that, we have to cry out to Hashem. We have to cry. We have to yell to Hashem, in whatever way it is. Right? And if, you, if you're following along with us in The Lost Princess, this is totally mind-blowing. Because we saw, we're at the very end of The Lost Princess, and the, and the Viceroy faces his biggest challenge yet. And he faces what seems to be the most insurmountable thing. Right? The, 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 the giant who's in charge of the winds, who's carrying a tree around with him, right? And he, he feels like this is it. He's lost it. And what does he do? He just breaks down and cries. And he, he cries and he yells, I know for sure that it exists. I know that I'm going to find the princess. Right? But right there he cries first. He has to cry. Right? When we're breaking down, when we're going through all the pain and suffering, and we don't get it, we don't understand anything, it doesn't make sense, it's like it's, it's, it's put into the fabric of creation, the way things work. We have to get to that place where we can cry out to Hashem, where we can scream. Good moment. And, and from that place where we cry out to it, no, 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 no. From that place where we cry out to Hashem, and in, in, in that place, now we're able to bring down a certain level of understanding into the world. And if we're able to, to, to become that person who, 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 who really exists in a more spiritually elevated level of existence, and we don't use our eyes for negative and for, for tumma, and we don't use our ears for negative or tumma. And we don't use our mouth, our nose, nothing. We, we, we relate with the world only from a place of holiness. Now, I might be able to draw in that wisdom that's been born into the world through my cries. Right? And that's how he's going to find the princess. That's how he's going to get the princess, right? It's totally amazing. Totally amazing. And it's following the same path. So this is where we're at. Yoimar alokechem. So what does Yoimar Elokeichem says your God? Yoimar, hainu bechinas amira bechashai. This is referring to amira bechashai, uh, um, uh, saying quietly. Sheze bechinas shemen, which is referring to shemen, oil. Shehu bechashai. Oil has an aspect of silence to it. Kamei shekosu bazara, like it says in the Zohar HaKadosh, yayin laor makala v'shemen bechashai. Wine pours, raises its call, but oil pours quietly. The Shemen, who us, and of course Shemen, the, the oil we're talking about, refers to, is connecting to the Shivas Aneris, the seven candles, the seven uh, lights that we have, that we have to sanctify. Right? Shahayu Mishemen. So, so the, the seven candles were made from oil. That's this part of us that we're talking about. Elokechem ze bechinas elokim la'or makala. And why does it say elokechem? What does the word your God mean? That is referring to elokim means la'or makala, to raise up one's voice. Bechinas tza'aka. So together with shemen, which is oil, refers to this aspect of, of lighting up our spiritual menorah, our personal spiritual menorah. Turning the seven aspects of me that, re- that, that, that relate and interface with the world into a shining menorah of purity. Only relating to the world with purity. That means I got to stop watching things I shouldn't watch. Right? I can't talk Lush and Hora anymore. I can't speak. I can't eat non-kosher food. I can't, I can't listen to people who are speaking only negativity and who are, who, are, who are pulling us down and speaking Lush and Hora. I have to turn these parts of me that are my main spiritual interfaces with the world into something holy. They have to be burning like a holy menorah with pure light from, from oil, right? And when I do that, when I become that person, now I'm able to draw in that knowledge that was born out through my cries to Hashem, my screaming to Hashem. And that's the Elokechem, which refers to raising one's voice like Elokechem la'or makala, Elokim la'or makala. It's through these two things. That's how we're able to draw in makivin. We want to know, we want to understand more, deeper, what's going on in the world? What's going on with me? What's going on with my family? Why do I have to experience these difficult things? How can I tune in on a slightly deeper level? Right? 
Rabbi Nachman is telling us, it's these two things. That's how we draw in the makifin, those things that are above us, that we don't understand. It's understanding and attaining holy das. That is the main form of consolation. Which is which is one level of makif above me and another level above that even. Oy vay vay. This is special, special, special Torah. So, you know, if we can put it like slightly into something that, that we might relate to a little bit. You know, we, we said a lot of muscles about this in the past, but let's just bring one more, like just once again, just say one more thing so we have like something to attach it to, right? Um, you know, there's so many things in the world that we see people put a lot of effort into. People are willing to, people are willing to, to fight. People are willing to, 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 to put in blood, sweat, and tears into something. People are willing to be, experience pain. If they know what they're doing is, is, is for the good. Right? People are willing to, to, to like, you know, you, you think about, um, you think about the people who, who, who go and work out in gyms. We talked about this, right? And they're lifting these weights and they're struggling and they're pushing as hard as they can and they're screaming in pain as they're lifting these hundreds of pounds in their muscle-bound craziness, right? And, and, and through this, they're, 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 it looks like they're dying. It looks like they're, they're, going, they're experiencing tremendous pain. But to them, because they know what they're doing, it's not just that someone is 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 like is 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 oppressing them. They know what's happening. They know why they're doing it, and therefore, to them, to them, it's it's greatness. It's not pain and suffering. Like we said, like we said last time. If I welcome, I have a couple of people are here in person. Um, like we said last time, the pain that a woman has to go through during childbirth. Would she ever experience that pain? For anything else, if she didn't know that at the end, a beautiful child was going to be born, there was going to be a new soul born into the world. But because she knows, because she has that das, she understands what's happening. It's a mo- it's a time of, of of joy. It's the das. It's the understanding of what's happening that allows that allows these things to be to to, to go from suffering to joy, or at least from pain. To, 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 to tolerating difficulty on the way to something better. Right? That's why Das is the ultimate Nechama. That's a consolation. When we're shown what it means, why it's happening, why, 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 why we have to experience this, that's called the consolation. And that's why Gullus, exile, is referred to in the Sarim as Gala Ami Mibli Das, that my nation has been exiled from Das because of no Das. In other words, exile only happens when we don't have das. And when we are able to develop clarity and wisdom, we're no longer in exile. So the ultimate, the ultimate revelation, the ultimate redemption, right? Coming out from Gaulus and, and, and into Geula, wh- what do the Pesukim say? Mala ha'aretz deyas Hashem. The world is going to be filled not with uh, simcha, not with, you know, uh, freedom, Right? Not, not constant parties. Maybe there will be. Right? But that's not what it says. It says, Mala arts deyas Hashem. The word's going to be filled with das. Because it's das that's going to be the ultimate comfort. So it says Reb Nassim, Kol he'inyan hanal. This is in the small, small print here now. This whole inyan that we discussed over here, Hamavoyer bekitzer, al pasik nachamu nachamu, beloshen yakadish. That we said on this pasik, nachamu nachamu, in Rabbi Nachman's holy words, I heard it from Menachem's mouth himself, his holy mouth, with little more explanation. So I wrote down for myself what I heard from him. Therefore, I didn't stop myself from writing it down here in this Torah. And in the beginning, when Menachem was explaining this, he started by talking about the, in, the, the Indian of life and death. Anava Amar, so he spoke up and said, Bein Chaim Lamisa, Ein Chiluk, Kiim Bamidas Ama Achas. Rabbi Nachman said, 
The difference between life and death is only an ama, a hand, an arm, uh, forearms length, right? What do they call that in uh, English? Cub- cubit, no. tefach. Hands breadth is, te- is tefach. Oh, okay. This is this one. Uh-huh. I think it's a cubit. Cubit. Is only is only a cubit. Vachrakach. Sorry, one second. Shaachshav Adam Shoichin Bakan. Right now, a person dwells here. Vachrakach Ushoichin Sham. And then afterwards, he dwells over there. Vehita biyadai al beisa almin, and he, he he hinted with his hand to the cemetery. So so when Rabbi Nachman said this over, it was when at the end of his life when he lived in Uman, and and the the place where he was where he lived in the base medrash was was right beside the cemetery where Rabbi Nachman is now buried there, and he was he was sitting in in the house and and the the window was there while he was speaking to Rabbi Nassan, and he said that right now a person dwells here and then then. After a person dies, he dwells there and pointed out the window to the old cemetery. And then he started teaching this whole other Indian, Chayim Nitzchiim, about eternal life. Like we said earlier, Kloimar, someone who merits to have true das, true knowledge, to know Hashem. Such a person, the more a person gets to know Hashem, have das of Hashem, there's no difference whatsoever for that person between life and death. Ki, hu davok v'nichlal bo yisbarach v'chayev v'moyse, because that person is, is, is totally stuck to, davok, attached to, and encompassed in Hashem, in his life and in his death. Rak achsha v'chayev dirasar b'kan, just now, in his lifetime, his dwelling place is here. V'achrakach dirasar sham, and then afterwards, his dwelling place is going to be over there. And then I heard from his mouth this whole Indian about eternal life, and here it goes. Are we ready for the talk on eternal life? Let's see. Yud base. Chaim Nitzchim, eternal life, him rak lahashem yisbarach, is only, the only one who has eternal life is Hashem. Lechaim. Kihu chayla netzach, because Hashem lives forever. Umisha nichlal b'sharasha, but someone who is encompassed in his root, the haynu boyizbarach, meaning in Hashem. Hashem is our root existence. If we become encompassed in our root, which is Hashem, who gamken chayla netzach, that person also lives forever. Kimi achashu nichlal be'echad, because once a person becomes encompassed in oneness, the oneness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Vahu echad im Hashem yisbarach, and he becomes one with Hashem. Hu chay chayim nitzchim kamoi Hashem yisbarach. Now that person lives eternal life just like Hashem. Vechein ein shleimus rak la Hashem yisbarach. So too, there's no completion or perfection other than Hashem yisbarach. Vechutz mimenu kulam chaserim, and except for him, everyone is lacking, missing something. Umishahu nichla boy. And someone who becomes totally encompassed in Hashem Yisbarach, he now has Shlemus. Right, so we said, this concept of Das, to know Hashem, if we have knowledge, if we have the Das of Hashem, we become like Hashem, we become the same as Hashem. And if we become the same as Hashem, if we become attached to our root, encompassed in our root, back to the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so now we are, in a certain sense, like Hashem. In a certain sense, we are Hashem. I know that sounds shocking to say. But in a certain sense, we are Hashem. And if, if you don't want to be shocked, just think about it. We say it all the time. That we, we our souls, our souls are a chilek elika mimal. A piece of Hashem from above. Right? We, we know that that's our essence. All we're saying is that our essence, our essence is a piece of eternity. Our essence becomes, we get more attached and, and encompassed within our essence which is our eternal essence. And that's connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And if, and if, if our essence is a chilek al is a piece of Hashem, and that's what we become, that's what we become encompassed within our root and our connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then we just, we just become eternal. How can we be us and still be part of eternal and infinity? That's for later, after Mashiach comes. We don't know that yet. We can't understand that yet, right? But that's okay. We like it. We're happy with the fact that we can't understand that yet because we know that that's going to be the paradigm shift in Das that we're going to experience at that point. 
right? And we can't quite get it yet. And the main way that we become all encompassed within Hashem, into the oneness of Hashem, is through Das, knowing Him. Das Oiso Yisbarach. Knowing Hashem, having Das of Hashem. Like the Chacham said, the Chacham is the Bala Kuzari, by the way. He said, If I would know Him, I would be Him. If I would know Him, I would be Him. Ki Iker Ha'adam. Who has seichel? Because the main aspect of a person is their seichel. The main essence of a person is the seichel. Vayadei valkein b'makom shechoshev haseichel sham kol adam. Therefore, the place where the seichel thinks, where our thoughts are, that's the whole person. This is, by the way, one of the most famous. Um, he's basically quoting one of the most famous teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. B'makom shadam choshev sham kol adam. Wherever our thoughts are, that's, that's, that's us. That's what our existence is, right? Which is super powerful and, and really an, an, an awesome idea. And, and it, it really should give, give us all pause to think about what it means, right? Rabbi Nachman talks about this in many places. But, but he, Rabbi Nachman likes to remind us that even though we're not in control as to which thoughts pop into our mind, we don't have control over that. Right? It's not up to us. But what we do have control of is whether we want to continue to think those thoughts. And Rabbi Nachman makes the metaphor that our thoughts and us are like a horse and a driver. And just like the horse is powerful and is always moving, the driver has the ability to steer the horse wherever he wants. Right? So too, we, have, we always have thoughts coming to our minds nonstop. Right? Maybe, maybe millions of thoughts that we don't even realize. And we can choose to follow them a certain way or not. We can choose which thoughts we want to, to, to base ourselves on. Right? To the extent, another amazing idea Rabbi Nachman brings down, that when we're in the middle of tefillah, of prayer, Shemon Esrei, and I don't know about you guys, but have you ever had a non Shemon Esrei thought in the middle of, of your Shemon Esrei? You know... Like a, a, a strange thought, it's a thought that doesn't belong, a bad thought, uh, a, a tumidic thought, whatever it is, something that off topic. <laughs> You're davening to Hashem, and something comes into your mind. You start thinking about your shopping list for the day, or, or did I pay that guy, or whatever. I don't know. Whatever. Hopefully, I'm sure it gets much worse, right? But, <laughs> but we have bad thoughts. So Rabbi Nachman says that really, maybe it's Rabbi Nassim who brings this down. Anyway, that those bad thoughts are actually souls that need a rectification. And if during our prayer, if we choose to, to leave those thoughts, ignore them, and move back on track, then those souls get a rectification from our focusing our minds. This is the power of, of, of our minds, right? Totally amazing. And Rabbi Nachman points out a tremendous piece of advice that it's impossible for a person to have more than one thought in their mind at one time. We can only ever think one thought at a time. And so... Says Rabbi Nachman, if we're having a problem and we're, our mind is going places where it shouldn't go, we're going towards fear or negativity or, or judgment or jealousy or, or tumah, whatever it is, if we right away replace it with another thought, right? It's good to have a list, by the way, of good thoughts that you can always think, right? And I right away replace it with another thought, I'm now filling that space. And now that bad thought is gone because I can only think about that good thing right now, right? Which is tremendous advice. But... Wherever our mind is, that's where we are. That's telling us over here. Our mind, where, where our thoughts are, that's our essence. That's, an, uh, that's a revelation of our essence. So wherever knowledge we have, where our das is, that's who we are. So if our das is das of Hashem, we are in a certain sense Hashem. We are in, on that, that eternal life, infinite connection. And that's what we are. Right? Let's see where we are here. And when we are able to attain, grasp, and understand the knowledge of Hashem, who sham mamish, then a person is really there, mamish, in Hashem. And the more the person knows, the more a person knows Hashem, the more a person becomes encompassed within Hashem. In Hashem. 
right? And all of the lackings that a person has. Whether you're talking about money or children or the health of a person's body. And all other types of lackings that we have. It's all Hadas. It's all a lack of das of knowledge. Knowledge. Even though there are those people who are totally lacking das, I'm sure you know a few. In <laughs> but it seems like they have everything they need. Seems like this person has no das whatsoever, but they're filthy rich, and they have the fanciest cars. They have everything. They got the good, you know. Whatever. <laughs> they got the, yeah. I won't speak about too much about what they have and what we don't have. Be'emes, kol mash yesh lehem klum. Really? Everything that they have is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. V'chein lehevach. Hashalem, what does that mean, what they have is nothing? If, if you really believe in Hashem, and we're really reading these words, and you're hearing them, and they're going in, and we really we understand and connect to them, it means that soon we're going to be enveloped within our Creator to some extent. Right? We're going to, you know, whether Mashiach comes tomorrow or whether we get to the end of a long, well-lived life and we pass on to the next world. Right? We're going to have eternal life depending on the level to which we know Hashem. So, if we have this das, we have everything. If we don't have this das, and I have all the fancy cars, and a beautiful house, and a puppy, and a, you know, a nice uh, interlocking stone, and I don't know, whatever uh, marble counters and everything that people have. Heated driveway. He- oh, that's a really good one in our country. Heated driveway. Oh, that's going to be the new uh, heated driveway. Right? If I have a heated driveway. <laughs> So, so my, my driveway is going to be nice and clear in the wintertime. It's going to be geschmack, right? But at the end of my life, am, am I going to be happy that I had to heat a driveway when now there's nothing left? There's nothing? Right? Das. Da, das in this world helps us. The more das we have in this world, the more, like, like Rav Arish used to always say, right? That, that there, there's a different existence once a person has a muna. Once a person learns Imuna and lives with Imuna, it's a different life, totally different life. And you can be you could be living in Gan Eden in a certain way. Das in this world now. And then Das, when we move on to the next world, or when Mashiach comes, that's that's gonna be our connection to eternity. So so is it really so great that a person has a nice car and a heated driveway, but they have no Das? They have nothing. Absolutely nothing. And also the opposite way. Someone who has who has complete das that has but seems to be lacking something in this world. Really, that thing that the person's lacking is nothing. Like Chazal say, famous famous Gemara. Chazal say, Das Kanisa Machasarta. If you've acquired das, what are you lacking? But if you're lacking das, Makanisa, what have you acquired? Nothing. Ki ikra chisaron vashlemus taloi badas. The main aspect of whether you have shlemus, completion, perfection, or or lacking, is all dependent on das. Really, in this world, to a certain extent, and for sure in the next world. You guys with me on this? Yeah. You what? can't take it with you? I guess. But it's, it's a good... It's, it's a, it's a, it's a Sure, yeah. Absolutely. But, das you can take with you. Das you can take with no, you. Right? right? The, the, yeah. The yeah, yeah. The, 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 the heated driveway, can, you can't take with you, right? For sure. So, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, fantastic idea. And just, you know, a person, a, a person with a muna has so many tools to 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 get through the challenges of of this world so many so many things help us and perhaps the top level of it really and when you think about it emuna is intrinsically tied to das because you have to know hakadosh baruch Hu. and when you know hakadosh baruch Hu, now 
you can trust the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and you can you can just see that you 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 can live your life knowing that whatever happens to me is is from Hashem, and it's meant for me, and it's good for me. And okay, I don't I don't quite see why I don't have that level of das, but because I have a certain level of das in Amuna, I'm able to, to 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 live my life in a whole different way, a whole different way. Do you remember this thing? I said it before. I'll say it one more time. That I heard from Rabbi Tatz. Rabbi Tatz was talking about the concept of uh, emuna and bitachon, and uh, yeah, and with the way we get angry, which is what it's going to be a good segue because the next thing we're going to say is vechein kas vachzaris, anger and cruelty. So let's 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 use a Rabbi Tatz vort as a as a segue. Rabbi Tatz says a thing like this. He says that if a person he's not talking about the same thing we're talking about, but he says. So you have a guy who wakes up in the morning and, uh, you know, he's having, he's, he's already having, his relationship with his wife is on the rocks. His kids are driving him crazy, right? Things aren't going well at work. So this guy wakes up in the morning and he gets out of bed and he tries to find a clean shirt and he can't find one. The only one he can find already has a stain on it. So he covers it up with a jacket, whatever, he's heading down the stairs, goes to take a sip of his coffee and it spills all over the shirt, Right? He, he's, his wife is yelling at him. His kids aren't listening to him. He goes to step out this, the, the door to go to work. And his kid left the skateboard on the stairs. And he steps on it and falls, trips down the stairs. right? And he's cursing and yelling and whatever. He gets into his car, turns on the car, and backs out of the driveway. There's a flat tire. And everything that's happening, he's going to be late for work. His boss calls him on the phone and is angry with him. And he's, where are you? And you're late. Right? And this, this guy is losing his mind completely. And he's yelling at everybody, and he's fighting, and he feels like he's about to explode. Right? That's the guy. So he said, imagine that the night before, Hashem would come to this person. In whatever way, Hashem, like he knows it's for sure Hashem. This is part of the story. Whatever way Hashem comes to someone, so they for sure know it's true. Okay? And then Hashem says to him, okay, guess what? Tomorrow, you're going to wake up and you're not going to find a clean shirt. You're going to go downstairs and you're going to spill coffee on yourself. And then your wife's going to be screaming at you and the kids are not going to be listening to you and you're going to fall and you're going to, the whole thing's going to unfold. I want you to know that it's all a test. You have only one job and that is to not get angry. It's your one job. Don't get angry. Right? So what's gonna, what's the, how's it going to unfold the next day now with this knowledge that he has? Totally clear knowledge. It was, he knows it's Hashem. So he's going to come and he's going to wake up and he's going to be like, oh, look, I don't have the right, I don't have a clean shirt. That's what Hashem wants. Okay, put my shirt on, go down, spill the coffee. It's like, oh, there's the coffee that was supposed to spill on me today. All right, okay, I'm going to keep going. My wife is yelling at me. I'm sure she has her reasons. Probably I wasn't, you know, the best husband I could have been. My kids are not, are not listening to me. Okay, we'll work on it. This is supposed to happen. Falls down the stairs and like, ah, I guess that was a kapara. I needed it. What can I tell you? <laughs> and gets into the car and so on and so forth, right? And the whole way, he's a happy person. He's not angry. He's not upset. Because he has clarity. He has amuna. He has das. He knows what's happening. This is the theoretical power of das. To whatever extent we can, we, we can, we can bring it in. Right? And, it's, it's, it's so, and, and the way we get it, is we gotta we gotta keep learning, we gotta follow the advice of Rabbi Nachum. We can't just learn it. We gotta do it. So we gotta cry to Hashem. I need it. I need help. Right? We gotta work on our eyes and our and our and our ears and our mouth and our nose a little bit too. I guess whatever. <laughs> Maybe we have. Uh, you could get jealousy through your nose for someone else who has very expensive perfume, or something. I don't know how the nose works. Um, but anyway, if we can do this to ourselves, the more we develop our dust, the more we're going to be living in this world. So let's see what he says now. We have a few more minutes. Oh, we actually, we're just about out of time. Okay, a little bit. Also, anger and cruelty comes from a lack of das. Like the Pasuk says, Anger rests in the bosom of fools. Valkein hachoyle hukasan. Therefore, you see, sometimes someone who's sick is very short-tempered. This is for sure me, by the way. <laughs> I actually, I said the words to my wife this, the, the other, like a week ago. 
I was sick. I had a very bad cold. I was really sick. And, and I, the words actually left my mouth. Like I, I said, I have to go lie down. I'm just, I'm out of it. I need to lie down whenever. And then something happened, whatever. And I was like, I just need to be left alone. Or I said, like, can you just please leave me alone? Can you believe those words came out of my mouth? I would never say that to my wife. I would never say that to my wife with a clear mind. Ever, ever, ever. And, but, you know, when you're sick, your temper's short because you're not clear, you're not thinking, you don't have das. And so things just come out. Machmas Shaz, who bedinim. And because at that time when you're sick, when you have a sick, you're, there's dinim around you. Right? Ki dinim, shoyim alav, the a sick person has dinim dwelling around him. The dinim, him mochin de katnas, and dinim cause mochin de katnas, constricted consciousness. Valkain, who bakas, and that's why a person at that, at that point is, is experiencing anger, because they don't have the proper level of das. Right? If, um, you know, when we get angry at people, you know when someone gets angry at you, and, and what are you thinking in your mind? You're like, you know, you have the, fa- <laughs> the thing that happens, right? You have a fight with someone. Someone's really angry. They're yelling at you. And then they hang up the phone or, you, or they walk away or something like that. So you spend the next like hour walking around thinking about all the things that you would, you would have said to them. And, you're, you know, your anger is boiling up and you're like, oh, he, he doesn't even know this, doesn't he know this, doesn't he know that. And you're thinking about all the things you would respond to them, right? About why things went that way in your opinion, Right? And really, you're right, and they're wrong. So what does that mean? It means that, it means that when a person gets angry, if they only would... Now, th- put that knowledge into the other person. What if, right before that person got really angry at you, you could just upload your, ex- your whole experience into that person's mind so they could see the world from your vision and the whole situation from your vision and everything that led you up to that moment? And they had that, that knowledge, that level of das, they would never yell at you. They would never scream at you. They'd probably go over and give you a big hug. Right? Because they would understand, they'd have the das of what really is happening over here. So when you don't have das, you don't have clarity, you're in a constricted consciousness, you're not thinking about, your, if anything, you're thinking only of yourself, right? When you're in that situation of sick, of, 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 of chayla, of sickness. And, you're, and your mind isn't working clearly, there's dinim on you, you're just in a negative state. It's a time of anger. Look out, don't, don't, uh, don't poke the sick person too much, right? It's not going to work out well, <laughs> right? So we have to do our part. We're going to hold it there because I think I had to restart one of the clocks here, but I think we're at about an hour now and, um, and it's, a good place to, it's a good place to stop. Um, Mr. Shem, we'll, we'll keep going. A lot of amazing stuff this week. Is there any uh, questions or comments before we shut down? Anyone? No? Okay, so we'll finish now. Thank you so much, everybody, for for joining, and have an awesome week and an awesome Shabbos, and we'll see you in Mirza Hashem next week. Love you guys. (laughs) 